our goal is to take the data for student, quarter, and class. And for each student in each quarter, we need to list the classes horizontally. And we want to do it with dynamic array formulas. Now, two videos ago, we used Power Query to create this report because our data was coming from an external source. Last video, we used DAX formulas and the data model pivot table because really that's the easiest way to make this report. But in this video, we got to check out dynamic array formulas. And the reason you might want to use formulas rather than Power Query or DAX is because it's the only solution that can update instantly when source data changes. Now, now the dynamic array functions and the new Excel calculation engine that we're going to use in this video are only in Office 365. Currently, September 25th, 2019, they're only in Office 365 Insider Edition. Now here's our table of data, and it's stored in an Excel table. That's the name of the table. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to look through student and quarter and get a unique list of all the combinations in these two columns. We can do that using the sort by function. The array, I select both student and quarter. That's the correct syntax for two columns in an Excel table, comma. Then I have to tell it which column to sort by. I want student, comma. We want to sort ascending, so we use 1, comma. Then we want to sort by quarter, comma, 1, close parentheses. Now this is a dynamic array, so when I hit Enter, the result is spilled. Now notice it's grayed out because the formula does not live in that cell. It only lives in the top cell, F4. Now this isn't quite what we want. We want a unique combination. And I have three duplicates here. So F2, we simply put sort by into unique. Close parentheses. When I hit Enter, it spills a unique list of all the combinations of student and quarter. Now I also want a number incrementer telling me how many records I have. So we're going to use yet another dynamic array function, sequence. Now this function will spill the numbers 1 to whatever. We just need to tell it how many rows. Well, remember, F4 contains the spilled array. So I'm going to say, hey, rows, count how many rows right arrow, and use the pound symbol to refer to the entire spilled array that lives in cell F4. Close parentheses. If we leave the remaining arguments out, sequence will default to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now notice when we hit Enter, this is a spilled array also. And the formula lives in the top cell. If we scroll down, we can see we have 47 records. Now here we need a formula that as we copy down, we'll see name and quarter. Look over here and deliver all of the appropriate classes joined together in a single cell. Well, that sounds like the perfect job, at least the first part, for filter. Now the array, we're only trying to get classes, so I'm going to select that whole column. Comma. We have two lookup values that we need to find in these two columns. So I'm going to start by joining student. Join symbol ampersand to quarter. And I'm going to ask, hey, joined lookup value, are you equal to student column joined together with the quarter column? Now, if I select include and hit F9, that gives me the trues and falses that will filter that column. Control Z, come to the end, close parentheses. Now, remember, this is delivering multiple items. So when I hit Enter, it spills. That's not what I want. F2, we want to join them. So we use yet another amazing function, text join. It needs to know the delimiter. We want double quote, comma, space, double quote, comma. We want to ignore empty cells. You can put true one or leave it omitted, comma. I'm going to leave it omitted. And there's our text right there. Filter, as we copy down for each row, will deliver a different set of classes. So come to the end, close parentheses. Control Enter. Now it's all in one cell. Double click and send it down. That is absolutely amazing. Now notice this formula spilled to two columns. This one spilled to just one column. But this one, we had to copy all the way down. Now F2, I couldn't figure out how to make this spill, especially since the full spilled set of conditions or criteria are not the same size as these columns over there. I even tried transpose and things like that. I couldn't figure out how to do it. But let's see what happens if we add data. Control down arrow. Here's some data. Control C. This is an Excel table, so right below, Control V. 
Now watch this, control, up arrow. Well, of course, these spilled. I see 51 records, but this didn't because I copied it down. I can double click and send it down, but control Z. And I'm going to control Z, Z to undo that. Control home. I'm going to revert to something we've been doing for decades with array formulas. I want this formula to automatically copy down when new things to the left are added. Well, how did we used to do that before spilled arrays? Well, we'd use the if and a number incrementer. I'm in H4, so I type H dollar sign 4 colon H4, close parentheses. That construction simply inside the formula counts one, two, three, as we copy down. So that's our counter. And I'm going to say anytime you are greater than or past the last item from the spilled array, I'm going to use rows a second time, refer to F4 pound. Now rows. When I copy it down, we'll always count from the original cell how many rows were spilled. Now, wait a second. That cell reference right there, if I copy down, would be looking at F5. And there's no spilled array there. So guess what? I have to hit the F4 key to lock that. I think that's the first time I ever took spilled array and locked. But now we have our logical test. And if it comes out true, which means we're past the last row, comma, we want to show nothing, double quote, double quote, a zero length text string. Otherwise, we want to run the formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, Control Down Arrow. And here's what we used to do, of course, before spilled arrays. And I'm going to drag it down however many I think will be the maximum. Now think about this. This is a little bit annoying because there's a formula that lives there. But even if we were using spilled arrays over here, we can't put anything down here, right? Because this is an expandable report. So now, hopefully, there it is, 47. When I add the new records, Control-C to the bottom, Control-V. Now, Control-Up arrow. Of course, it stopped because there's something living in that cell, but our report is working. All right, so that was a lot of fun. We used unique and sort by. We saw a sequence, rows with a spilled array. And then, of course, filter, text join, referring to the spilled array with a lock, if, and rows. Now, if you want to learn more about dynamic array formulas, check out this video. And if you want to see the other two methods of creating this report, Power Query and DAX, check out this video.